Hello everybody and welcome back, it's Angelica. I hope you're all doing well and staying warm in this chilly January weather. So today's video isn't really like my other videos. Um, it's been a long time coming and the footage that I will be showing is actually a couple of months old, most of it, anyway. Um, but today I am actually sharing my experience uh, buying some horses from a kill auction in Yorvik Stables. Um, I thought I'd put as a fair warning that I do talk a little bit about some tougher topics like kill pens or auctions and um, some abuse and neglect to horses in this video, but I don't touch on it too much, but just, you know, if that's something that would be hard to listen to, which it is, is a hard topic, um, you can just skip later into the video. Anyway, uh, I suppose I'll get into it now. Um, yeah. From my limited knowledge of auctions, and at least just the knowledge I have from my own experiences, the horses there don't tend to be too fancy. Usually Mustangs or quarter horses, occasionally a thoroughbred of some kind, but with things like the kill auctions, at least around Jorvik, they can really be anything because a lot of the time uh, the horses brought to these auctions are ones that have behavioral problems or injuries or are just horses that are unwanted anymore and as sad as that is it can lead to some really really beautiful horses being in some pretty bad shape and being brought to these auctions and it's really just quite a range it depends on what is on the auctions page what horses are there when you get there what's already been bought and when you get outbid on but yeah Going into this auction, I didn't expect anything fancy. I had a few horses that I'd seen on the webpage on my mind, but, you know, it really depended on what other people bid. The first horse in the ring was a beautiful Shire mare. She looked to be a Shire anyway. Um, I wasn't too sure of her breeding yet, but I did recognize her from the webpage as one of the horses I'd had my eye on. Um, she seemed to have a pretty good temper. She was relaxed, and of course, many, many people bid for her. She was a beautiful horse. Um, then she started spooking around the ring pretty bad at the noises from the crowd and the bidding decreased significantly. Most people when they come to these auctions want a horse that they can use maybe as a project, train up to be better, heal to be better, but they don't want a horse that they aren't going to be able to manage. Um, but I kept bidding for her and I was a little worried I would get outbid. There were some people who were pretty persistent despite the spooking, uh, but eventually I was able to be the last bidder. Auctions are a hard place to buy horses. It can be a tough decision as especially when the horse is in the ring, it's a new environment for them, it can be pretty scary, they can act out or spook or bolt, um, they can in some cases charge people, it, it really depends, um, and so it makes it hard to decide on horses. It's really an instinct thing, it's a in the moment decision split second, but um, then when I saw this mare in the ring, despite her slight aggression towards um, the auctioner and some other things I noticed, I did bid for her. I gave myself a budget when going to this auction, and I had <laughs> very nearly almost passed it with the two first horses I bought, but when these next two came out, I just couldn't resist it. The first one seemed to be some kind of an Ardenne mare. Um, I would assume she's either purely that or a cross. She was absolutely beautiful. She seemed more mellow than the other two, only occasionally rearing. She did bolt a little bit at the sound of the crowd, but like I said, it's a spooky environment for them, and I just, I couldn't resist. She was so beautiful, and her eyes just looked so kind and so sweet, and I was very much being outbid, but uh, eventually I did manage to be the highest bidder, and the next one that came in, um, they said was actually her brother or half-brother, I don't remember, um, and he looked pretty similar. He was a more of a seal brown color rather than her silver brown, or silver bay, I'm not sure what it's called, excuse my <laughs> terminology. Um, he seemed more aggressive at first, and I was a little worried when I started bidding on him that it would be something I regretted, as he did run at the auctioneer a bit, but um, I, like I said previously, it's hard to tell, especially in the ring, and 
I didn't want him to go somewhere where he wouldn't be loved or taken care of properly, um, and especially since these are just such beautiful horses, seeing them go somewhere where they would not live their best life would be just such a shame, so I did bid for him. And eventually, over the course of the next week, I found myself short of <laughs> so many Yorvik shillings and having four new beautiful additions to my family here at the Neptune Equestrian Facility. So, as I said, I had come home that day with Montero. What are you doing? Okay. Sorry. I had come home that day with four new horses. I didn't know that much of what they were like. I didn't have that many papers or nor much information from the previous owners, but I had a lot of work on my hands. Let's just say that. And I was nervous, but also pretty excited to start working with them and just to see where it all went. I did end up contacting each of the previous owners for a little more information on each of the horses. Um, I probably won't be sharing much of their backstories as, at least for a couple of them, they are quite sad and it's really just tough to talk about and I'd much rather this be a happy video. Um, so I probably won't go too deep into that, but I did find out where they came from and kind of what was going on and why they were at the auction, so yeah. Meet Orpheus, aka Tatak Refined, which is a fun reference, <laughs> um, a 14-year-old Ardenne Cross gelding, and <laughs> a horse that honestly might be the one that surprised me the most out of this group. I began working with him slow at first. I was nervous judging by how he acted in the auction ring. He seemed to run at the auctioneer a lot, but... As I quarantined him for the first week, he actually seemed very chill. He spent most of the time just in the pasture, grazing. He did run around a little bit, but he seemed like a really chill horse. You can see in this clip, I kind of was just carefully approaching him. I spent quite a bit of time just being in there with him before I actually approached him. And much to my surprise, he was actually really sweet and really chill. He was a little bit head shy at first, which is definitely something we can work on and not a big deal at all. Um, and I led him to the barn and began just spending more time with him. A lot of the work that I did in the beginning with Orpheus was just working on basic ground stuff. I spent a lot of time washing him, grooming him, doing cuddles, desensitizing him to things around his head, because as I mentioned, he was a bit head shy. And I just took it really easy. I didn't want to rush into things. I really avoid doing that when I have auction horses unless I know them like off the bat that they're a safe horse. But that is very, very unusual that that's the case. Um, and so I just spent a lot of time grooming, washing him, petting him, cuddles, doing groundwork, lunging him in the round pen, just all of the basic stuff to get him used to me before we tried to ride. until eventually I did work up the courage to try and hop on him for the first time. I noticed immediately he kind of held himself in a more nervous way. I think he was kind of picking up on the fact that I was a little anxious, but he was definitely sort of upright the whole time. I don't really know how to describe it other than that, but he was really easygoing to be honest. He had lovely gates despite the chunky build. <laughs> um, I just did a lot of really basic work on our first ride. I barely did any kind of jumping at all, just tiny little cross rails that I had set up in the larger arena here. Um, and I did a lot of circles, bending, getting him used to the way I ride and riding in a way that he would appreciate and that would work for him. I tried hopping him over some things and most of the time with horses like Ardennes and other draft horses of their build, it's 
jumping really isn't their thing. It's not that they can't do it, there are a lot of draft horses that are really skilled jumpers, but it's just, it's harder for them to move their bodies in that way, so I was really surprised when it seemed like Orpheus was actually really enjoying the jumping and he was doing a pretty good job. Of course at a slower pace it was a little bit more difficult to get him over the jumps and it would be something that I would have to experiment with a little bit, but I was actually having a lot of fun. He has a really smooth jump, all things considered, and it was just a really good time. I really enjoyed jumping with him. As time went on, I did find myself experimenting with him a little bit. We ended up actually doing a lot more training and jumping, and I had so much fun with it. At a much faster pace, his jump is even smoother, and though it looks a little wonky because he really does have to work to get himself over them, he just does a beautiful job. In these clips, you can see I was at uh, what's now Golden Leaf Stables. <laughs> you might recognize it from some of my older videos as a barn that I used to own, Back then it was the Jupiter Equestrian Facility, but now my barn is called the Neptune Equestrian Facility. Um, but you can see I'm here, they have lovely jumps here, it was a beautiful day, and I just, I love the trees around there, I love that area, it holds a lot of um, sentimental value to me, so you can just see me doing things in these clips, but that's all kind of aside the point, this is about Orpheus, um, and... I just had so much fun with him. He works really hard. He works really well with me. Um, sometimes he can get a little bit pushy if I use too much of my reins. Like I said, he is a little head shy, but um, eventually I was just working with him more, and I did end up taking him to a very small show in um, Silverglade. It was very local, very few people, but um, he did a beautiful, beautiful job. He handled these combinations like it was just absolutely nothing. Um, I have a lot of really cute pictures from the show and you can see he was just doing an amazing job. We had some wonky distances, some weird speeds, but he handled it all so well and I was just so incredibly proud of how far he'd come in the short amount of time that I'd owned him. I honestly can't wait to see where my experience with Orpheus goes. He was just such an unexpected but absolutely lovely addition to our family here, and I've just had such a blast working with him these past couple of months that he's been in my care, and I'm just really, really glad that he's been able to be here. And with Orpheus, of course, comes his beautiful sister Selby, a 12-year-old Ardenne Cross mare, um, who is also <laughs> named after songs. If you get that, you get that. If you don't, you don't. But, um, they're both named after songs that I love. Um, and when I first got on Selby, I don't have much video camera footage or pictures of me spending time with her before we started riding, but this was our first ride you can see here. Um, it was a cold very early morning so we didn't do much but I took her over to this kind of like working desensitization course over by Silverglade and what I was not expecting was that this mare was into everything. <laughs> what I mean by that is that she was your perfect lesson mare. Yes, she had her vices, but she could really do everything, whether it was bending over ground poles, working on transitions, bending cones, doing small jumps, she could handle it all. And she really reminded me of my um, first ever horse, Coco, when I got her. I'm sure I've mentioned her before. She's been in some of my videos, I think. Maybe not, but um, it kind of hit a spot in my heart that I wasn't expecting it to. As I do, <laughs> don't worry, I do still have Coco with me, but she's been retired with a pretty bad um, medical condition for quite a while, so she has not been rideable. Um, but it just reminded me of when I was a little kid spending time with Coco doing simple things, just trying to get used to each other, and it was just awesome. Um, 
I've been loving my time with Selby just so much. Selby definitely has her buttons to push like every mare. She's a bit lazy, requires more leg when going over things, but I just, I really have my heart set on her being such a beautiful horse for our lesson program. Um, I'm really glad that I was able to work with her uh, because when I first got her, she had a pretty bad injury to her left front leg due to um, some rough experiences in her past home, but uh, I am happy to say that she is all healed up and um, she's just loving life and I'm loving spending time with her. Um, I'm so grateful to have her and Orpheus together. It's been amazing. And then was Salem, aka Salem after midnight. She's a Shire Cross mare. Um, she was not what I was expecting. That's of course not a bad thing. It's hard to know what to expect when you're buying horses and I don't blame her. I don't judge her. I'm not upset at all, but she has been really tough to work with. She's an incredibly gentle mare, very sweet, but she is really afraid of people, um, which has made working with her really hard. Um, I know from the auctioners and her past owners that she, well, not so much her past owners because they didn't really want to tell me much, um, but I know that she has had some pretty rough experiences with people. She's been from home to home because of this, and she is really afraid, especially of men, as I found out. And um, so that kind of led to me just having to spend a lot of time with her that was not touching her, not trying to work with tack, not riding her, but just being near her and getting her used to the presence of someone who wasn't trying to hurt her or pressure her to do things and just letting her be a horse. Um, and it took me a lot of weeks even to just be able to touch her. Um, and eventually I did get there. You can see <laughs> Um, how much changes in these clips, my outfit, her halter, all those kinds of things. I had a lot of help getting her used to people. My stable hens would work with her, with her when I couldn't, excuse me. And um, eventually I made enough progress and was finally able to be near her, pet her. And I'm really proud of how far we've come. It's not been easy. It has not been fun necessarily, but I think that one day eventually I think she'll be a really incredible horse. And last, but so definitely not least, is tequila, aka tequila texting. I don't think I can put into words how unexpectedly lovely this mare was. I was cautious around her in the same way that I was for Orpheus, as in the ring she had just such attitude and aggression but I think it really just came from a place of stress and fear um I know from the auctioners and I did a little bit of research into her previous owners that where she came from was not a safe place she was um in a really abusive place and they do not treat their <laughs> animals in general well their horses i've seen a lot of horses from that place that have been rescues and unfortunately there isn't much that they can do to uh shut it down um and i noticed that tequila has a lot of cuts and scars kind of all over her when she came to me um they were all healed but they were very noticeable and honestly it just breaks my heart but <laughs> enough on the sad stuff um she just blew my mind. I started working with her um, in a lot of different things. I wanted to know what she was into, what worked well for the both of, both of us, and um, I tried everything from western to jumping. I tried different bridles, different saddles, and just seeing what would work because I could tell that with the right amount of just kind of nurturing and love and just doing whatever I could. I could take this mare so far and she could take me so far and it was just amazing. 
she does have her moments she definitely has some spice in her um i think considering that she's an arabian mare that's uh, a bit to be expected but even doing things like bareback doing simple pleasure riding or just running along the beach she's amazing It's been a while since I've bonded so quickly with a horse like this, and even just thinking about it now, it makes me so happy to think that I took a horse from a place that brought her so much fear and so much discomfort, and brought her somewhere where she can thrive and be exactly the horse that she is, and just not ever have to worry about being pressured or hurt or whatever may have happened to her previously. Um, I think in the future I would love to take her to some show jumping shows. She really has that fiery attitude and the complete perfect amount of energy for just launching herself over really even the highest jumps. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet. I still have to figure out a lot of things about her and see what buttons I need to push uh, to get her to be her best, but I think with enough time and practice and just love in general, I think that I can really go so far with this horse and I can't wait to see what the future holds for us and where she might take me. This whole experience has brought so much to me. So many different emotions and so much to battle with. I have always um, struggled when buying horses from auctions. It can be a little bit of a scary thing to make such a fast decision and not know what if you're going to end up with horses that you can't even begin to work with, but um, I'm just so happy that these are the horses that I ended up with. I can't wait to see where they go in the future. I don't know if this is their forever home, but I um, I'm really excited to see what the future holds. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I know this is a little different and maybe a little bit of a longer video, but I hope it was fun. Goodbye!